So like most things, when you learn a little bit about something, you get some knowledge, but then you have a lot of questions too. And one of the questions I had was, what was it like downtown? If I could go back in time and walk downtown, what would I see? How would it change over time? Who would be the people that I would meet in the stores? You know, what brush strokes did they add to the portrait of Bayfield? And that's really what was the genesis of this talk. So here's what we're going to be focusing on. We're going to be focusing on three blocks. The Etzel block, which is the Joann's block. The St. James block, which is a block that includes fat radish. And also the Bell Building block. We're also going to talk about three individuals that we might have encountered if we were walking down the street back in time. And those are Henry Walksmith, A.H. Wilkinson, and Curry Bell. So let's start with the first building. So this one is the Etzel Hardware Building. It is Joann's. So this one was built in 1883. This is the colored map for 1886. You see over on the left-hand side is the Etzel Building. It's got the hardware store and the tin shop. I want to point out, I'm going to focus first on the Etzel Building. So in these pictures, you'll see other building, and you may well go, isn't he going to talk about those? I will later, but we're going to focus on that Etzel building first. It was built for $3,000 to $4,000. It has every article of hardware or tinware line, and he conducts a manufacturing department where everything in tin, sheet, iron, copperware is produced, also repairing done. And the green one is the tin shop. The green indicates it's some type of non-combustible material. I've scratched my head over that because I don't think the building was ever any kind of brick or cinder block. That section did have a cement floor. So that might be the reason why it is green and not yellow. It was the Etzel Hardware Store for a period of time. Then it became the England Hardware Store. This is someone standing in front of the store. That is the most photogenic dog I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, they, you know, looks like a runway model, you know, with that look. Here is the it's England store again. This is with a horse-drawn snow plow in front of it. And I'll just point out off to the side there is what we will talk about later. It's the Leahy Building. And there is the inside of the England Hardware Store in about 1917. And the dates I have on these photographs are really the, the work of the people who put together the archive of photos for BHA, and uh, we're all very indebted to them. Okay, so here's another look at it. Again, you're going to see more buildings. I'll get to them. But right there you see it's the hardware store. But you also see the title sign there. I wasn't familiar with that, so I looked it up. That's the Title Plains Oil Company. So it was making a transition to a gas station type building at that time. Title was ultimately bought by John Paul Getty and became part of Texaco, as we will see later on. Now here is the Etzel block in the 1942 flood. Again, the focus is really there at the end of the street, Texaco building, Philco radios, was at that point a Texaco gas station, 1942. Then we have the Centennial. We've got another look at the Etzel building. I really regret I could not find a picture that had the front of the building as a gas station. I just wanted to find that so bad, and I just wasn't able to find it. Then in 1975, it takes on a different look. The sign says Sedgwick Leather, and then here's another look at it. Here you can see where the building was changed to make it a gas station. They took off the corner of the building, they made it at an angle, so cars could kind of pull up where the Camp Wabik Easter Seals bus is. Then next it became China House Restaurant. Who says there's no ethnic cuisine in Bayfield? <laughs> uh, and then in about 1987, it became Joann's. That's the first look at Joann's. And here we are today of what is, I think is a very, very handsome building. Now, you know, how did the building change over the years? That's what it was in 1883 there on the left. And on the right is it as it was changed. So they, they moved the front of the building. And I'm really impressed at the work they did, how they preserved the look of the windows. I think it really retains a lot of its character. But it was more than just moving that front wall. They had to change the roof line and everything else. So well done to whoever did that. I promised you I'd look at some other buildings, so here we go. We're going to talk about what happened to the rest of the block. So again, let's go back to 1886. We've got the Etzel building there, tin shop next door. we got the Boots, B&S, that's Boots and Shoes. That was Walksmith's, I believe. We have the grocery store. That's where Andy's is now. 
It's not the same building, obviously, but that's where Andy's is now. We have a dwelling there, and we have a, the rest of the block is blank. Now, in 1892, there's an addition to the block. There's a bank that's next to the shoe store. And I'm guessing it's the same building that was the grocery store before. But I couldn't find a picture of that bank, and it was just driving me crazy. And then I found this. And this is a painting that was done by W.W. Downs. And it's now over at the Madeline Island Museum. And this is a fount of information that it just helps so much putting things together. That's the Etzel building there. That's the boots and shoes store. That's what was the grocery store. And there's the Bell building down there. This is a scene, I think, somewhere between about 1888 and 1892, because the, the Bell building was already put together. Here's Downs. He's an attorney. Let no one say an attorney didn't do something useful. He, he gave us that painting. And this is what I found in the painting, which I really got excited when I see that. When you blow it up, there it is, Lumberman's Bank. There it is. It was in the store that I think used to be the grocery store. Okay, then the next thing that was put in was the meat store next door. And we see something has changed on this map. Now we have a brick building there. The meat store is brick. Otherwise, the streets is the same as before. 1911 map, we have a couple of additional changes. We've got the barber shop here. And then we've got what we know as the First National Bank right there at the end of the block. This building has become a printer and water motor downstairs. Don't really know much more about it than that. But here's, I think, a pretty good look at the block. Here's the bank. There is the printing shop, I guess. Here's the shoe store. Right there is the meat market. And right next door, there's the wooden building that was the barber shop. So here's the bank. There's the dwelling right there. There's the grocery store printing office. Shoe store, meat store, barber shop, Etzel building. And when you zoom in on the sign, you see that that's a sign for the Walksmith's shoe shop. Henry Walksmith was born in 1855 in Germany, arrived in Bayfield, 1882. He was a shoemaker. He was a pretty big person in Bayfield. He worked as the town chairman, equivalent of the mayor, for a number of years. He started the Bayfield Progress to compete with the Bayfield County Press that was then owned by Curry Bell. And one of his civic contributions was $1,000 for the construction of the dock at the foot of Rittenhouse. Uh, Henry had the nickname uh, Whiskers, but... I mean, I tried to research it, and for the life of me, I cannot figure out how he got that name. Uh, but we'll just leave that as a mystery. 